Okay, um, the next section of this presentation is the busting of some myths. Um, there are a lot of myths that are discussed about feeding raw. I don't have time to get into every single one of them, but you're more than welcome to go onto one of my forums and ask some questions if you have any. Um, essentially, um, these myths are told by kibble producing companies. Um, and they're told for the reason to create doubt in you, the consumer, who's feeding kibble now, making them money, to keep you away from feeding raw. Uh, there's a basic principle of human action, and that principle is this. The confused mind always says no. If you're thinking about feeding raw, but you're not sure what you should feed, you're not sure if it's good, you're going to say no. You're not going to do it. You're not going to take that step because you're confused. So these kibble companies create doubts, these myths that I'm about to bust all to pieces. Um, so I want you to keep that in mind. The confused mind says no. So we're going to talk about four myths here. Uh, not every myth that there is under the sun, but four myths. And we're going to break them up because these are, uh, these are the most basic of the four myths that need to be discussed so that you are no longer confused about the process of feeding raw because it's really pretty simple. Okay, so let's go. Okay, we're moving on to myth number two now, which ties into the first one, and that is feeding raw meats can bring dangerous bacteria to your dogs, or to you. Uh, again, there's some truth in that. Anything dead and laying around can, can get bacteria, um, and that, again, is designed to confuse you. But you know what? The same truth exists with kibble. Many of you may recall some of these uh, dog food recalls, these kibble recalls, where they had aflatoxin poisoning. I know several kennels that had their entire yards die off by feeding aflatoxin poison, that these foods got contaminated. <clears throat> this aflatoxin, it's a fungus, I believe, or some type of mold, and uh, it developed in the kibble, and these people fed their whole dogs this poison. They killed them all off. Um, so it's possible. It's possible that these things can happen with kibble or with raw, but that's not the real reason to avoid either one because they're improbable. Um, I mentioned earlier the difference between probability and possibility. It is not probable that your dogs are going to get a bacterial poison. It's possible, but it's not probable. And the same exists with kibble. It's basic principles that we're going to be getting into incrementally as we progress through this DVD are the reasons to feed raw, not these well, your dogs may die of aflatoxin, that type of nonsense. That's just scare tactics. Um, regarding whether dogs will get bacteria from feeding raw, two things are true. Number one, it's improbable. If you buy human-grade meats from your store, you freeze them, thaw them out, and then feed them to your dogs, it's so improbable that your dogs are going to get bacteria that it's not even worth thinking about. I've been doing this for years. Never had one dog get any type of bacteria poisoning. And that brings us to reason number two. Dogs have stronger digestive systems than you and I do. Uh, what might make us sick and go to the restroom, it doesn't bother a dog at all. They eat roadkill, they eat all kinds of stuff without getting a problem. So this idea, this myth that your dogs could get some secret bacteria poisoning is utter nonsense. It's, it's possible in a little bitty manner but it's improbable, utterly improbable, and if they do get exposed to a bacteria, they're designed to take it. Their digestive systems are so much greater than ours, it's not even worth mentioning. I've fed puppies from four weeks old all the way to elderly dogs, 13, 14 years old. Never had a bacterial problem, and I'm talking not one dog, I'm talking about between 10 and 40, 50, 60 dogs raw. I've never had a problem, so you won't either. Um, so let's bust that myth right now, this idea that this bacteria can exist that will hurt your dogs. The other uh, potential uh, problem, I got some puppies going after each other. The other potential problem that um, is listed is that you might get a bacterial infection dealing with this raw meat. It's real simple, people. Clean out an area of your sink. You prepare your raw food, you wash your hands, you, you wash all the utensils off, you take a little spray bottle of bleach and you spray it off, clean it up, and you're fine. Been doing this a long time. I've never got a bacterial infection. You won't either. So that's myth number two busted. 
Uh, so we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, moving on now to myth number three, uh, and that is eating, eating raw bones will kill your dog. It'll perforate the gut or it'll choke on them. Again, because it's possible, because we can envision it in our mind, we become scared. Oh, well, what if that's true? What if that actually happens? The reality is, it's just not going to happen. The, the odds are... I mean, it's like saying, well, if you go out in your car today and, and go to drive in, you could get in an accident and get killed. It happens all the time. People get killed all the time. But when you consider the billions of people that are out there, the thousands of times that you get in your car and drive every single day of every single year for however long you've been driving and everybody you know, it's improbable. Even if it happens once, it doesn't mean you shouldn't drive. It just means that it's a risk and, and don't take it. Uh, I've never, in uh, over six years of feeding lots and lots of dogs raw, ever had a dog choke, ever had a dog get a perforated gut. It's just not going to happen. It's theoretically possible, but it's improbable. Again, that's the possibility versus probability. To show, once again, how absurd this is in the reverse, I could say the same thing. Well, it's possible that your dog, if he eats kibble, can help and inhale it and choke. I know of a few people who actually have had their dog choke to death and die. I mean, it's possible. So that's, you know, to use that as a scare tactic, not feeding kibble, is ridiculous because enough of you have fed enough dogs kibble to say, yeah, it's possible, but it's not going to happen. I'm not going to worry about it. It's the same truth with feeding raw. Uh, I've had a dog, as I mentioned, uh, get gastric torsion, super red, as a female that I had. She was wolfing down her food so fast, her gut flipped over, it twisted, it just cut off all the circulation to her, uh, her gut, and she died. I mean, she's female on love. But I've fed thousands of dogs raw, every hunt, you know, day in and day out, excuse me, kibble, it's never happened to them. I've fed a lot of dogs kibble, it's never happened but one dog. So to use that as, a, as a, a scare tactic not to feed kibble would be ingenuine of me. Yeah, it's possible, but I wouldn't worry about it. Those aren't the reasons not to feed kibble. The reasons are it's simply not as healthy, not as nutritious, and not as long-term effective for your dogs. Getting back to this myth and scare tactic about that the kibble companies try to prevent you from switching to raw, to say that your dog's gonna choke on a bone or get a perforated gut is utter nonsense. I've been doing this for years. Lots and lots of people have been doing it for years. It's just not gonna happen. The dog's stomach is designed to eat it. I'll show you on this film. My dog's eating the skull, the bones, just wolfing it down and they poop it right out. No problem. So, myth number three, the idea that if your dogs eat raw bones, it's gonna choke them or that it's gonna perforate their gut is utter rubbish. People are like parrots. They repeat what they hear. Rap, only want a cracker. Oh, it'll, it'll perforate the gut. So one person hears that, rah, they say the same thing. They have no knowledge of what they're talking about, but they just repeat things like parrots. If you eat a bone, it's going to perforate the gut. Then they just repeat it like a parrot. Don't be a bird brain and listen to it. It's utter rubbish. Take it from somebody who's fed dog after dog after dog raw bones, and it doesn't do anything to them. So myth number three busted, and we're going to move on to myth number four, which is the idea that feeding kibble is as good as feeding raw. It's not, so let's stay tuned. All right, now, the fourth and final myth that we're gonna discuss uh, before we move on to the presentation and getting into basic principles is the idea that feeding kibble is as good as feeding raw. Uh, pure balderdash. Again, we've touched on it before, there's no way that completely dried brown pellets cooked to these little brown pellets is as nutritious as the original raw ingredients that they started out with. To give you an idea of the drastic changes that can happen to food just from cooking even a little bit, consider what's called pasteurized milk. A lot of you, you know, you look at your any gallon of milk that you want to get, it'll say pasteurized and homogenized. What the hell does that mean? Pasteurized milk is milk that is heated extensively to kill any bacteria in it. Again, they, to, to kill bacteria. These companies, 
don't want you to sue them because you drank bacteria. So they pasteurize the milk, they heat it up, they homogenize it, and they shake it up, and, and they kind of create a new milk. Well, what does that mean? Fact. The milk that comes out of the of the cow in its raw state is designed to keep uh, a calf alive. It, it sustains the life of a calf. The milk by itself in its natural state with all of the microflora, enzymes, and vitamins, minerals, etc. is able to sustain a calf. Well, guess what? When you pasteurize milk, when the farmers milk the cow and they heat up that milk, that heated milk when it cools off can no longer sustain the life of a calf. Think about that. That's milk. It's still wet. It's still moist. You can still pour it. But just that heating process alone that kills bacteria also kills the good bacteria. These good bacteria in raw items are vital to life. Again, the term biological availability. What does biological mean? Or, of, or pertaining to life. Biological availability means the availability of the vitamins and micronutrients in a food, making it available so that life can be sustained. The raw food, the raw milk, is at its highest biological availability. It sustains the life of a calf. When you cook it, its biological availability plummets right down the drain. Enzymes, microflora, bacteria are destroyed. It can no longer sustain life. Come back to the raw meats, the organ meats, and things like that. You know, you look at a bag of kibble, and you see all these beautiful pictures of raw food. The chicken, the tomatoes, whatever it is they have on there. Oh, it's beautiful. But that's not what they give you. They give you little brown pellets. So, even if it has the best ingredients profile, and you see these things listed there, you're thinking the raw food, you're thinking that, but that's not what you're getting. They're talking about all these vitamins it has. That was in the raw state. It's not the same when uh, it gets burned and extruded and boiled down to kibble, it's no longer the same. It no longer is able to sustain life in the same fashion that uh, it was able to as a raw food. So let's look at some of these foods. We're talking Inova Evo. We're talking Taste of the Wild. We're talking Nature's Variety uh, Instinct type foods. Let's look at these foods put out on the table and discuss them and take a look at them. And let's bust this last myth, the idea that uh, feeding little brown pellets is as good as feeding the raw, wholesome ingredients that they started out as. Okay, so let's go take a look at these foods. Uh, Innova Evo is another kibble that a lot is popular with a lot of people. I just heard that they were bought out, I believe, by Purina. And the health food store, the canine health food store I went to get these products, refuses to carry Innova Evo anymore because when they're bought out by these big companies, they change all the ingredients, first of all. What's worse is that they're not required to change the ingredients on the bag and reflect the changes in the product for up to a year. So that means these companies for a whole year can get away with changing the ingredients to crap and then uh, letting you know about it a year later. So, um, that happened to Canada. Canada used to be a pretty good kibble, a really good kibble, good value, and then it turned to garbage. But simple fact is, I don't care what kind of kibble is, it's not as good as raw. Um, I'm going to get to this, which is raw frozen last, but let's take Taste of the Wild. Taste of the Wild is a, a, a great kibble, as kibbles go. And let's look at the seven of the ingredients. Um, duck, chicken meal, uh, it also has roasted quail. Well, you know what though? Unfortunately, duck and chicken meal don't look like this. Qu this is not a quail. What else does it have? Uh, tomatoes? No, I'm sorry. This is a tomato. This is not a tomato. This is a tomato. This is what has the moisture. It's, it's juicy. It's flavorful. It has all of the uh, vitamins, micronutrients. This is devalued. It sounds good reading in the label. See, oops, I dropped a kibble. I'm sure Doug will find that sooner or later. It shows you this wild, it, it, it fools you. It's basically lying tactics. It shows these wild wolves. It shows a, a duck coming up out of nowhere. It shows a, a pheasant. 
the sun. All these things get you high, so to speak, on the idea. But the truth is, this is a colorful bag, and this is the garbage that's in the bag. Totally devalued. This is what a quail looks like. We're going to get into it with the rod presentation. This is a quail. You can feed your dogs this, and I'll get into that later. Rabbit, a lot of these foods have rabbit in it. This is a guinea pig. You can get rabbits, you can get all that stuff. Uh, blueberries. This is supposed to have blueberries in it. It's not a blueberry. This is a blueberry. This is what they look like, and you can feed that to your dogs as well. I can open this without spilling it. Uh, which way did it go? Here we go. These are blueberries. They're juicy. Okay? It's, it's an utter deception and lie. It has uh, yucca or yucca shigadera extract. Here's the actual yucca root or yucca root. There it is. You can cut pieces of it as I'll demonstrate later. Blackberries. This is what nature intended animals to eat. True food. Not these dry pellets. Now take a look at uh, Origen. It's a really great lying company. Okay, look at what it says, biologically appropriate dry food. I'm sorry, but uh, wait a minute. Here, the, the funniest thing is, it says, uh, nourish as nature intended. I'm sorry, but this isn't what nature intended. These are dry ke uh, pellets. Nature, for life to exist, there must be about a 70% equilibrium of water as discussed previously. The world is 70% water. These raw products, the plants, the animals, your dog itself, you for that matter, all about 70% water. This, if you look at it, is only 10%. Uh, it's 10% moisture. It's, uh, it's not what nature intended. And then what Let's see, they have something on here that I think is funny. It says, oh yes, delivered fresh. It claims that all of these ingredients for Origen to make their product are delivered fresh. It's, they're just lying to you. Who cares what if it was delivered fresh? By the time they get through with it, this is what you got left. My dogs are going to have a field day on the floor. This is what you have left. That's not fresh. That's destroyed. Utterly, totally changed, totally destroyed. That's myth number one. These kibbled products, as beautiful as that packaging is, well, again, come on now. How many dogs do you know that swim in the ocean? They have ocean fish in there. Dogs don't eat ocean fish. It has nothing to do with nature. Yet they call it biologically appropriate. Just a lie. Um, oh yeah, there it is. Delivered fresh. Wild caught fish. It, it, it's just deception. They say all these words. They use these beautiful colors. They have actually tremendous ingredients. I mean, look at this. It's it's uh, good ingredients. Um, chicken, chicken meal, salmon. They got a lot of plants in here. Turkey, uh, herring, russet potato, peas, sweet potato, whole eggs, chicken liver. I mean, it's got a lot of neat things in here. If they were fresh, but at the end of the day, that's what you got. A bunch of nuggets. So, don't be fooled. This is not as good as raw, and we're going to get into the raw diets in a minute. Now this, if you're going to feed any type of uh, store-bought food, this Nature's Variety Instinct really is outstanding. Now this, unlike these other ingredients, or these other products, this isn't kibble. This is actual meat. This is raw, ground-up, totally processed meat. It's, it's uh, superb. It really is superb. Um, look at the ingredients here. There they go. Venison, lamb heart, lamb liver, raw ground lamb bone, apples, carrots, pumpkin seeds, squash, chicken eggs, broccoli, spinach, dried kelp, apple cider vinegar. I mean, this is really, really good stuff. The problem is this. Um, this product here is uh, three dollars and nine cents a pound. This product here is two eighty a pound. This product here is six dollars a pound. These are great ingredients, but they're turned to garbage. That's not nutritious anymore. They destroy it. This is a great product. If you're gonna, if if you don't want to cook, 
and you don't want to use any of the other uh, means I tell you about, this is the way to go. Because this really is raw flesh and it's excellent ingredients. But guess what? This whole quail is about the same amount of pound. Except this is $6 a pound. This is about $3 a pound. You can get raw whole animals, I'm going to get into it later, for the same price as these foods. And you can use my premium diets for about $1.20 a pound. And I'm going to show you how to do that later. So, myth number one. These kibbles are garbage compared to raw whole foods. These are just utterly destroyed, nutritionally bankrupt, moisture barren foods. Raw frozen is excellent, but it's too expensive. Six dollars a pound? Come on now. I can mix all this stuff myself quickly. I'll show you later and do it at a buck twenty-nine a pound. So, myth number one exploded. These commercial foods are as good. These two are not. This is as good as too much money. Show you how to do it as well as this, but cheaper. Stay tuned.